Well, good morning. It is Thursday, September the 7th. It's a little bit overcast. and Apparently, it's supposed to have a chance of some rain. Uh, early evening, late afternoon, I guess. It's still going to be 90 degrees, so still a warm day. So take care of there, everybody. Right, we're going into the King James Bible. 1 Corinthians, this is the final chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter to Corinth. And it's chapter 16. Now concerning the collection for the saints, I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, Whomsoever you shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you, when I shall pass through Macedonia. For I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that you may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto thee. For I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren. But his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and they that have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to every one that helpeth with us, and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus, and Fortunatus, and Achaeus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord, with the church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be an anathema marantha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Had I have read this first, I would have looked up Anathema Marantha, and I can't remember. I have been told once before, so maybe one of you could look it up, because as you can see, I've got my work shirt on, and I'm about to go to work soon. Um, I don't want to be controversial here, okay? I don't want to be controversial all I want to do is present you the word of the Lord. And it's worth noting that chapter 16 starts off now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, so do ye ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him 
that there be no gatherings when I come. Okay, he's telling them to gather up. He doesn't say money. He doesn't say food. He doesn't say what. He said, as God hath prospered him. So if you've done well in any certain area, he's telling you to lay some of that up for the saints. He doesn't use the T word, okay? <laughs> he says a collection, but it's for the saints. The other thing I notice here is that in every case, it's God willing. They're guided by God. They're guided by the Lord. If the Lord permit. And he talks about the other guy and he's saying, you know, they're waiting for the Lord to tell them what to do next. He's also telling them to be strong. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. There's a large influence here on, on men who are the head of their families, men who are heads of the church, and the reverence to Jesus Christ and to God. They're all male figures, <clears throat> and they're figure heads. Men need to stand up and be strong for your families and for your church. You know, it, it, it's difficult. But the thing is, it can become... What's happening today is kind of like the chicken and egg situation. Whereby it's like, well, you be strong. No, you be strong. Well, if you're strong first, I'll be strong. You know, No. Biblically speaking... God wants the men to be strong. Okay? It's... We really have been demasculinized. You know? Our strength as men needs to be echoed throughout our family. We are the head of our families. Now, I find that surprising because I... I that can be quite a contentious issue these days, you know, especially with single parent families who are deliberately going down that direction. I don't know why. And the way everything has been since World War II and women have had to go to work and everything else that goes on. But we, and I said this before, we really have taken away from the foundation of the family. And just like Jesus Christ is our foundation, he is our rock. If our families don't have a rock, and I'm learning this way too late in life, Lord, please forgive me. But our job is to pass on to others that they can learn. So pass this on to your children and grandchildren. Set an example for them. Men, that you are strong. Now, being strong doesn't mean physically. It means emotionally, spiritually, to be a rock for your family. Just like Jesus is our rock, we're to be a rock for our family. I'm surprised that that came out from this passage, but that's, things just suddenly jump out at me. And, you know, it's, it's always pleasing to see how Paul acknowledges people in the ministry and gives them due credit. And, and he's, he's acknowledging their work and what they're doing. You know, here we hear Aquila and Priscilla, you know, who have the church that is in their house. The brethren greet ye, greet one another with a holy kiss. Oh, I just, you know, there's such a purity and, and Charity, which is agape love. Most times when you hear charity, they're talking agape love in the King James Bible. Agape love. 
and love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's just beautiful to see it in practice, in writing, being acknowledged that way. It's a wonderful thing, but it's all about relationships, isn't it? It's establishing hierarchy. There is a hierarchy. God is greater. For a start, there's a hierarchy. There's a deity way above us. You know, it's, if we don't recognize it, if we want to equalize everything in this world, if we want to turn it upside down, well, then that's just, it really is the devil's playground, doesn't it? We need to start getting back to the hierarchies, to the values in life, to being strong like the rock of Jesus Christ and standing up for what is right, what is good, what is just, and what is beautiful. And not let anyone take us down because we do that. Oh boy, didn't see that coming. Great message though, thank you Lord. I think that we need to focus in that direction. You know, those of you who are listening that have families that are kind of estranged from me at the moment because of distance, reach out to them. Reach out to them and, and, and be a rock for them, you know. I'm sure that there's people out there that are going through different phases in their life, in your families, in your, you know, even in friendships and work environments, you know. If you're a man, be the rock. So, you know, there's this big thing coming out now that our pastors have been talking about. Be, be, not be frightened to pray for someone. That indicates strength. You know? Just say, you know, you look a little upset today. Can we pray? Can I pray for you? What person in the right mind is going to tell you to go away? But you're strong. And what you're showing them is, I've got a faith that's strong. I've got a faith based on the rock of Jesus Christ. And I want to use that and share it with you so that you can have some of that and feel that strength too. It's a wonderful feeling when you do it. I don't do it often enough. Physician, heal thyself. <laughs> so, you know, Let's be strong, guys. Let's be strong for our families, for our friends, for our work, people, for everyone that we meet. Let's be strong. Let's be ahead of our families, the head of the church, ahead of our communities. Let's show them what real men can do, what real men can be like. And you know what? If it means shedding a tear now and again, don't worry, that's okay. If someone's breaking down and it touches your heart, you can break down with them. You can demonstrate empathy. You know, you can show emotion. That's not weakness. Because out of that emotion, you can rise up and say, you know what, now we need to pray. And feel better and smile. Because there is a God that loves us. Oh, he loves us exponentially. I mean, really does. And I love you too. Thank you for listening. Hope you have a great day. Watch out for that rain. It's coming. Thank you, Lord. Bye for now.